Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel where today you join me for a visit of one of the most iconic venues from the automotive world. Behind me is the famous Chateau Saint-Jean, the home of Bugatti. Today we're going to take in an experience of everything this fantastic manufacturer has to offer. I'm going to be jumping into that very Bugatti Chiron behind me for a test drive with Andy Wallace. We'll be able to take a look around at the facility starting where the customer journey begins in Remy's Sud, where they would come to spec their future vehicle and then head over to the atelier, the assembly plant where cars like this are built. We can also take in some of the history and enjoy the experience of everything here at Bugatti. Let's get started with a quick rewind. So Ettore Bugatti founded the company over a century ago in 1909 here in Molsheim. It's now part of France, but at the time this was in Germany. And then in the mid 1920s, the company moved to be based right here at the traditional chateau built in 1857, which is now the main customer reception downstairs with offices above. Either side of the chateau, it's flanked by the stables. To this side, you have the Remy's Sud, with the room where you can see different options and the configurator that we'll experiment with later on. On the other side of the chateau, you have the Remy's Nord, which now houses the museum and some pieces from Bugatti's history. We're, of course, in the driveway, joined by this fantastic example of the Bugatti Chiron, but you would arrive here through the traditional gates at the very front of the facility with the assembly plant, the atelier, towards the rear. But let's take a quick walk around of this very car, the Bugatti Chiron, which no doubt needs very little by way of an introduction. We'll be jumping on board for a ride experience with Andy Wallace very shortly, and then swapping seats for me to take the wheel to discover what this car is like. This particular example is finished in full exposed carbon fiber. It has a dark tint, but you can see the exposed pattern throughout the entire car with the contrasting interior to go with that. And of course the car itself, it's powered by an eight litre quad turbo W16 that makes 1,500 horsepower and 1,600 newton meters of torque. And the car itself is limited, electronically limited, to a top speed of 420 kilometers per hour. Now the Chiron is soon to be joined in Bugatti's lineup by the Devo, but really this journey for the modern day company started with the Veyron in the early noughties, a car that was the pinnacle of engineering in every possible way with its achievements, its capabilities, its performance, but also its reliability and the way it went about things. The Chiron then superseded the Veyron and took the game on to an another level as I'm going to be exploring and discovering later on. But as you can probably tell, it is winter here. It is rather chilly. So let's find Andy to learn a little bit more and to take this car out for a drive. I am joined now then by the legend that is Mr. Andy Wallace. How are you? Doing great, thank you very much, if a little cold. That is certainly for sure. Now, I believe that Andy has one of the very best jobs in the world. Well, as a car freak, yes, I do. <laughs> um, very fortunate to be able to drive this car pretty much every day. And you spend a lot of time taking customers out for drives, part of the experience, right? Yeah, and it's basically getting the customer to be comfortable in the car. You know, it can be a little bit intimidating driving something with this much power, but after five minutes, you realize actually it's a pussycat. And getting to discover, this is one of the things, I mean, I know some of the headline figures, of course, 1500 horsepower, but this car mixes so many different characteristics together. Yeah, it's easy to forget that actually underneath all that, it's a luxury car but it just happens to be incredibly fast. Yeah, so 1,500 horsepower. What are some of the acceleration figures? Well, I always think the 0, 100 is, is really an almost an irrelevant measurement these days. These cars are so fast. So 0, 200, six seconds flat. 0, 300, 13.1. These are crazy numbers. 13.1 seconds for this car to accelerate all the way to 300 kilometers per hour, 186 miles per hour. Well, I'm not necessarily sure we'll be doing that today. We're not on the German autobahns. But shall we jump in, take a seat, hear the, hear the noise of the car starting up? Yeah, let's do that, and it's warmer. warmer Definitely, that's, that's quite a, an attraction at this very moment. This car, very stealthy in terms of its visual appearance. We'll take more of a look at the interior shortly, but let's listen to the quad turbo W16 coming into life at the back here behind the exhaust. It roars with a cold start, deep rumble. Of course, you've got full length rear brake light the iconic C-shape that surrounds the door. Well, let's open it up, take a step inside, as Andy suggested, to get just a touch warmer. This is certainly oh, very, very welcome, much nicer already. 
Wow, this is quite an interior. And shortly the heated seat will be warming up nicely too. <laughs> that sounds very, very nice at this moment. And it's one of the things, isn't it, as you were saying, you have those performance numbers, but then you just take a look around here at the, the quality of the finish, the, the materials. Yeah, everything you can see, everything you can touch is quality, as you say. And it's also very uncluttered. There's not really that mm. much to distract you from the job of actually driving the car. Mm. And uh, one of my favorite features is the speedometer, which goes all the way if I can just show this, to 500 kilometers per hour, which is quite a nice fun touch. So, shall we head on out then? Let's do it. As we head out, we get our first look at the rest of the venue, and I believe this is the Orangery. It is, and this is actually a building that was built by Mr. Bugatti back in the day. Um, it was a crazy foodie, and so he wanted everything to be perfect. And then in front of us is the Atelier, this is a famous venue that I've never been to at this point, but very excited to see. I've seen many, many images, and inside are the works of art that Bugatti create. As we depart then, you will notice on the right-hand display here the tyre pressures and temperatures, which are currently all showing about 4 degrees, 0.5 degrees outside, but I believe it's quite important to get those slightly warmed up. Well, the happy number is 25 Celsius. If you've reached that level, even in first gear, you have 100% traction with no wheel spin. But I don't think we're going to get there today very quickly. No, I mean, it's obviously important, certainly with this much power, uh, to, to have all of that prepared. But it's just so smooth. I mean, driving normally, gently like this, it's comfortable, the ride is good quality. We just effortlessly glide along with that grumble behind some swooshes of the turbos and get to look around the automatic gear lever beneath these lovely toggles that you can see above. Just taking it all in, the light bar that continues around the inside to match the design of the exterior. And then that view through the rear over the engine bay. Wow. It's a lovely place to be, isn't it? It's just beautiful. And actually, now these seats are warming up nicely. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, let's just put it in first gear and see what happens. Because mm -hmm. we've almost got enough. Wow. It's actually not too bad, is it? It's, no. It's just losing a little bit. That acceleration is phenomenal. Okay, so now we're up to 23 in the rear tyres, 22 in the front. Sounds about perfect. That should be sufficient, I think. You get the reversing camera up on that screen as well. So in a second, it's going to be my opportunity to take the wheel of this rather special car. And also, when you're parked up, you get two different pressure readings. Yeah, so obviously the the quoted pressure is always the cold pressure mm -hmm. but of course that's in an ideal world so we've been for a drive so if you were going to pump the tires up now you would need to pump them to the blue number okay and then when they cool down they would be at the correct ah, cold very pressure. clever yeah it's very clever it's simple i suppose but it's very clever so it doesn't matter when you pump the tires up they'll always be right oh, fantastic well then um let's uh let's swap her out let's experience what this car is like to drive. Wow, it really is. Well, a spaceship, isn't it? It's something completely different. And we now also have it, by the way, with the wing up as well, just so you can see how that works for cooling that comes out from within the exhaust system all back here, but obviously such a hot engine. So this is, the wing pops up to allow air to come out, right? Yeah, so, so this for the cooling. is the cooling position. Mm -hmm. um, and that will stay like that until the engine bay goes down below 45 degrees. Okay. For 300 seconds. Okay. Um, if you want, I can show you the autobahn. Okay. So first of all, yeah, just have a... The driving mode selector wheel, yeah. on the steering wheel. You actually see the ride height change first. Okay. And then the wing will... So the ride height changes, the wing uh, move positions as well. And that prepares itself for uh, fast driving. So one more, which is the handling mode. And actually yep. all you'll see is an extra four degrees go on the wheel. Okay, so handling mode, a bit more downforce, the wing pivot slightly further forward. Okay then, well, I'm getting very cold very quickly. Should we jump back in the car? <laughs> Here we are then, taking a step inside the driving seat of the Bugatti Chiron. Here we are. So, driving modes. We're back in the normal Bugatti mode. That's the original starting mode. Yep, and essentially that's an automatic mode at the same time too, so okay. it'll actually change with speed. Okay, so into gear. 
gearbox engages and away we go. It's very gentle, isn't it? It's super smooth pulling away. Effortless is the way to describe this car. Yeah, you just feel the quality, don't you, even driving this speed. It's it's so easy. It's not intimidating, it's not scary, it doesn't feel doesn't make you nervous in terms of the size. Yeah, and I always find it, it's not at all awkward in any situation. No. It'll just roll along very happily. So the immediate first sensation is is almost one of, of how invitational the car is to you, how how it's not a daunting prospect. And that's just driving gently, of course, probably less than one percent of what the car is capable of. It might be strange to say this, but I actually think one of the oddest sensations is that you can easily forget, driving like this, just in normal traffic, what you're actually piloting. It's, it's so normal, but in, in a different way. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, because that's quite often what I say to people when we're yeah. in the car. Especially if you're having a nice conversation, you can really forget that you're in a hypercar. And yet, to everyone else around, they see it, it's so distinct in its appearance and dramatically different from anything else. Wow, the torque hits you, doesn't it? It drops down a gear. The noises as well when you lift off, the whooshes and swooshes that you have all around you. You can actually just lose yourself in the whole occasion, can't you? Just going for, sure. for a, a nice drive. Now we can, of course, manually downshift. Drop some gears. That's the second gear. Just feed in some of the power. It's amazing how lightly you can press the throttle pedal, yet the car just propels itself with an ease that, honestly, there's nothing else that drives like a Bugatti, is there? It's, it's a one of a kind. No, exactly. And now you've got enough tire temperature too. It wouldn't matter what gear you're in, what situation you're yeah. in, you can squeeze the throttle and it's all going to go on the road. No waiting, no loss of traction, just me short shifting due to the uh, unexpected sensation of the car's propulsion. I just have to get a small feel for this. Wow! <laughs> the thing is, even that's probably not even 50%. But <laughs> it just feels so much quicker than anything else. I should probably add at this point that this car has done 27 and a half thousand kilometers. How do we pop up the lift system? So it's uh, anti-clockwise on that switch yep. and then let go. Like that. So, and then it takes less than ah, one second. And then it rotates so itself on. back and the lift system goes up. That's it. And over the speed bump we can roll. Back onto the open roads, back onto letting the car do its thing. So back in normal drive mode, what Andy was just saying, which I think is completely right, is that the car, you don't necessarily need it to be in sport mode, that controls the gearbox. You can just either go manual on the paddles when you're on a nice road like this, or keep it in drive, because the car seems to know exactly what you want it to do. And then, yes, so the gearbox reacts very quickly in drive or not, so yeah. you don't have to worry. Four wheel drive, early power out of the corner, and so much power out of the corner. One of the things about the car, though, is it's just so fast, you can't even begin to get into the realms of using it on public roads. Well, I suppose you, you have to pick your spot, don't you? Um, yes. <laughs> but it, it copes well with any situation, and then there's always a nice clear piece of road that you can you can actually get the throttle and fall down. Yeah. But not for very long, obviously. No, but in, in any gear, the, the amount of torque available just, just pulls it away. Even now, we're in seventh gear, just gentle press, drops it down to fourth, and it just picks up. What would you say is your favourite thing about the Bugatti Chiron? Mm, that's a, an interesting question, isn't it? Uh, I suppose it, it depends in some way what kind of mood you're in, but that, that feeling of intense acceleration is something that I, I, I've never experienced before in my yep. life in anything I've ever driven. So on the right day, on the right piece of road, that acceleration is almost addictive. Yes. Um, but then that's, you know, that's just only one very small part of it. I, I think I like. I know it sounds like I'm an old man or something, but I like the ease of driving, to be honest, because yeah. it's it, it's a real pleasure to drive in any situation. Whereas some of the other quicker cars are fantastic fun when you're really pushing, mm -hmm. and then less so when you when you slow down to normal speed. This is just a, a pleasure always. Yeah. So if I had to pick one thing choose that 
which doesn't sound very exciting, but I, I find it exciting. <laughs> no, but it is one of the, uh, the overwhelming sensations is that just cruising through these peaceful French villages, small towns, automatically driving in a normal civilized way, as, as we said, in a car that feels um, just like a normal, almost everyday vehicle, as opposed to the hypercar that it is. Even uphill, what is this car? Firm on the brakes, it doesn't pitch either. It stays completely flat. Absolutely right, and then when the air brake triggers, so above 180, yep. um, then that, the way that it actually keeps the car flat is even more the case. So, so we say, let's say from 400 kilometers an hour, yes, or 380, um, it pretty much eliminates any of that weight transfer that you yep. normally feel. Okay. But then there's noises as well. Uh, the, the lift off swooshes. It's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, if you just crack the window, it's yeah, it's a lovely sound. That was speed of touch. So much more of it. Uh, what was interesting then when you accelerate it is you can tell that it's just part throttle. Yeah. But it's just relentlessly pushing you forward. Yeah. And it never it never eases off. It continues delivering at the same rate consistently. To get a real feel for this then, so first gear, crawling along, and to give it some throttle. And oh my goodness! Wow! Wow! <laughs> It picks up so quickly. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> it just gets there so quickly, doesn't it? Yes. That it definitely does. So the test then. Put it into fifth gear. Let's say maybe fourth at this speed. Okay, fourth and gear. Then you're way under boost. And you yeah. just hold the throttle down. Hold the throttle away from boost. You feel that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> there we go. Okay, yeah. Amazing how you feel that, how you feel it delivering through. And now the other character entirely, just gently cruising down the motorway. Calm, relaxed, yeah. Yeah, all in the same car. It's very, very calm. You don't have to talk loudly, it's not noisy inside. The exhaust isn't intrusive. It always surprises me, actually, how little tire roll you have coming into yeah. the car. Yeah. 285 front tyres yes. wide. I mean, normally that should produce a lot of noise. Yeah. So here we are then, back at base. Thank you ever so much for this opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Having every chance driving a Chiron. It's just something, I don't know how to describe it. It's just so, so monumentally special. But we're back now to continue the visit today at Bugatti. The sad moment then of switching the car off so you get the Bugatti logo to the left, the Atore Bugatti signature to the right. Let's now climb on out to continue the next part of today's adventure and visit. But this car has been really quite something to experience. You just look at the view, the center line that runs over the roof all the way towards the rear, including the wing. Lots of openings, of course, for cooling wherever possible. It's magnificent. With the Chiron now lurking just outside, let's have a run through of the customer experience to come here to Molsheim to visit Bugatti. So from where it starts to specking up a car to ultimately seeing them being built. Now upon arrival, the customer would be greeted by their host and taken to the reception room over in the main house. Then the next stop is to come to the room that I am currently exploring in what's called Remy's Sud. Now this is where prospective or confirmed customers come to look at options to build their specification for a Chiron or a Devo. Now they would be greeted here upon arrival by a designer who could show them through all of the different samples, some of which we can explore right now. So here we've got different shades of paint, just a few of them, some tinted options for the carbon fiber. You can have the exposed carbon in red, in green, in purple, in blue. We have some leathers for the interior, some stitching examples. If we come through, you can have just about any paint color that you can imagine, quite literally. You could have a metallic, a pearlescent, a satin finish, 
You can have complete exposed carbon fiber, again, in glossy finish or in satin finish. All of the different paint color samples, different threads, there's the brake caliper, and there are plenty of objects around to look at how those will come across on the car, including back there. Some exposed, what looks like teal tinted carbon fiber, different wheels as well, and even some of the special sets. You can see how they come together. The Rembrandt Bugatti example we've got just in there. All very, very nice, as you can imagine. From there, they would then come through to this side with a gigantic screen for the configurator to truly build up a unique spec. As well in here, a quick shout out to the furniture, made itself from exposed carbon fiber. And just have a look at this seating area with the sofa and chairs, with the EB logo at the side. All very, very nice. A lovely lounge to be presented with. Also also featuring the engine from the car, which is huge. It's incredible to think that that actually fits inside the car itself. When you look at how large and how tall it is, around about 700 kilos or so, just for that assembly for the powertrain to get all of that horsepower out of one single power plant. Very, very impressive. So coming over here, you would be joined for a meal, for example, while being able to look through the options, some of which are presented here for us to see. So your choice of color, your choice of carbon fiber, some of your other materials and finish. And then on this tablet as well, when we log into it, you can see that you can actually build up uh, the car. So you can change the different view if we just scroll through these. I think there are a number of different ways. And that then comes up onto the main screen. If we just go back to the front, you can then load up some of the configuration options where here you can see, for example, the exterior colors. You have the option of a mono color scheme or a duo color scheme. You can select different carbon fibers. So for example, we could set the uh, A color to be blue visual carbon fiber, the B color to be, should we go with something completely different? Let's go matte, uh, a lighter color. Hey, that works almost in a way, doesn't it? So you can literally go through this and completely configure it all. Even in the horseshoe, you can have polished aluminium or have it painted should you prefer. And again, every different option can all be loaded up in here, including different views uh, and all sorts that you can have for the car. So this is, I suppose, quite close to the traditional spec for the car. I didn't save my configuration just then, but an ability to go through everything and all to be seen on the gigantic screen should you wish. So also in here you can see some of the models of the cars, some of the accessories, some of the other parts around. Even here, one of the exhaust systems as well. You can go through it all. Here is the box for the Chiron. If we just open this up and have a look inside, this is what you would get with your key. It also has the speed key. So if you want to go to the electronic limiter uh, to unleash it above 380 to go to 420, you'd need to have the speed key installed in the car. So this comes in a beautifully stitched box as well to match the specification on the interior of the car. And all of the drawers, as you can imagine, filled with different samples, different things that you can see to help with that experience. But now that we've seen where it would begin, let's head over to see the the cars actually being put together. This is where it all happens. I've come over to the atelier, the assembly plant, where each and every Bugatti model is put together to become a final completed vehicle. So the likes of all 450 Veyrons, the Chirons that have been built so far, and in future, the Devos as well. So let's take a look around this immaculate environment in which it all happens. Starting up here with a number of cars in various different stages of completion. So you can see on this car, for example, which is mechanically just about complete, but missing the visuals of the exterior bodywork, and of course the interior, which is one of the last things that gets completed on a car, only keeping the seat, the steering wheel, the components that are needed to move it around the factory. But you can see all the way from the carbon fiber through to the packaging operation at the rear. So for example, to squeeze the sheer scale of that engine and all of the components that are required is clearly quite an engineering task that they have to uh, go through to make all of that possible. And then you have a number of customers Customer cars ready to head on out, which basically aren't kept here. As soon as the car is finished, after it's two months or so, it heads straight out for delivery, wherever in the world that may be. Now there are nine stages through which the cars are built, an additional four stages over on this side for the paintwork and the dyno testing but three main stages. So let's come straight through and have a look right here at one of the most important and significant parts of automotive manufacturer, the moment of engine marriage. So you have the early carbon fiber chassis here, stiff, lightweight, with its wiring loom installed, and then behind it, the engine mounted to the seven-speed dual clutch gearbox, which using the contraption, uh, the machines on the floor, will literally marry together and become one unit. 
If we continue down a few more stages where different things happen and you have these trolleys or chariots that bring the components ready to be installed and before they even get here they go through scrupulous testing to make sure that everything is absolutely precise and perfect. So for example here some of the interior parts and another trolley just over here with some of the exterior final visual carbon fibre. So up on the top you can actually see the diffuser and the underbody. You've got the wing that you have just here, the bonnet panel, all of those arriving just in time to then be fitted to the car before they go through testing and various other different stages. So for example, right here, a car that is just about finished with the exception of the interior. That is waiting for the full interior fitment uh, to be done, which happens right here at the very end of the line. But what a location to be able to, to look at, to explore, to see. So you have the 13 stages in total, including the ones just off to this side. So you can see alignments and things through the back is the rolling road, the dyno that had to be built specifically, the only one in the world to be able to handle the power of the Bugattis for 50 1500 horsepower, the weight of the cars and the way it's delivering the torque. And then they come for paintwork, uh, inspections and checks with the bright lights that would be turned on around the car here and behind, ready to head on out for delivery. But each and every car actually gets protected to go out and do a road test. They all go to an airfield. Every car gets driven to 350 kilometers per hour before they then uh, are dispatched from here. And then one thing I particularly like, have a look at this, models of each of the Bugatti Veyron coupes, the original 300 coupes uh, in their respective colour schemes that were ordered. A very, very nice touch to be kept here uh, at the factory. So this is where it happens. This is where the cars are assembled and created. And wow, what a special place to be able to see. Beyond at the back is the logistics centre where all of the parts actually arrive to be organised, ready to go onto the cars. And then from here, you can see where they will come out, be loaded up and taken on from there. From the new to the old, let's take a look at some of the history behind Bugatti and where it came from here in Remy's Nord, where we have a number of the different cars from the more recent past, but also going significantly further back. So this will give us an insight into where Bugatti came from, what Ettore Bugatti was doing with his Saint Jean Bugatti as well. For example, we have the likes of the T25, a lightweight, originally road car that went on to race and dominated racing at the time. In fact, winning over 1,000 different different races. So those were from the mid 20s. In the late 20s you had the likes of this, the Royale. Only six were built. It is a ginormous car but it mixes luxury with status and you're presumably also familiar with the Bugatti Atlantic, one of the most beautiful cars in the world. So they mixed that sporty status and elegant configuration in the future to then go forwards and this was the concept, the EB164 concept for the Veyron. At the time when Volkswagen's ownership came in, the intention was to create a car with a thousand horsepower that could do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in two and a half seconds, could go to a top speed of 400 kilometers per hour in total, but still be driven to the opera. So this was the concept. Alongside it here, we have a pre-production of the Veyron, the 16.4, with 1,001 horsepower and meeting the various different objectives and really becoming that car that is completely its own. It went through a number of different variations along the way. For example, the Grand Sport came with a removable Targa roof. Then there was the Super Sport with 1,200 horsepower and then the Super Sport or the Grand Sport Vitesse that mixed the two together. And in this case, the WRC standing for World Record Convertible the fastest convertible in the world at the time. And really the Veyron was an icon for over a decade. For 10 years, it was the pinnacle of hypercars, the fastest, the most expensive as well when it launched. And in fact, even back at the time, the Royal was four times the price of a Rolls Royce. It was really a car intended to be sent, sold to royal families to have that kind of prestige. But to talk a little more about Ettore Bugatti himself, he came from a family of artists. His father was an architect and his brother Rembrandt was a sculptor. And in fact, if we come on through just to take a look here at the nose of the Royal, the elephant symbol that's worn there at the very top was based on one of Rembrandt Bugatti's sculptures itself. There's also been a more recent tribute to Rembrandt. So when they were nearing completion of the final Bugatti Veyrons, they introduced six special legend editions each in distinct liveries based on this, the Grand Sport Vitesse, one of which with exposed brown carbon fibre and some 
some other painted brown accents, was named the Rembrandt Bugatti as a tribute. But to think more about Ettore, he was really a forward thinker. So for example, here is one of the original workbenches that's emblazoned with the Bugatti logo, something that wasn't really commonplace back at the time. And another thing that he introduced that was really revolutionary. So when the T35s were being raced, he was the first to present customers with the opportunity to attend in a hospitality suite. That not only made them more part of the brand, but it also gave more exposure for Bugatti with the branding at different racing events. It is, of course, very interesting how they went from cars like this, cars like the Royal and the Atlantic, through to the cars that we have now via the EB110 along the way. Again, another part of the history in the 80s and the 90s, the EB110 models before the presentation of that in 1999. But also, just to look around the room here, the collection of some parts that we can see. So, for example, up here, you have the front bumper from the Black Bess, one of the other six Legend editions. And also, that's quite a distinctive part, the Fender of the Law Blanc, painted with that very, very unique uh, colour scheme that Bugatti introduced uh, a short while ago. So yes, a very nice little collection of cars in here, but let's head on back outside. Back outside then where it's getting late, towards the end of the day, but what a day it has been today to visit Molsheim, to see Bugatti, to experience the Chiron, to go out for a drive in it with Andy Wallace, but to also see more of the story behind the French manufacturer, to see the cars being assembled, to get a feel for what it's like to come here as a customer, to be part of it. But really and truly, what a car this is. And in the light we have now, does it not look just incredibly stealthy? The black effect of the dark carbon fiber with the black wheels as well also the black brake calipers but then that ignition of color coming from the inside you just walk around this car though and have to appreciate the engineering marvel that it is from seeing them bare bones without the body panels installed to realizing that it is basically the smallest package that it could actually be over the top of that in its entirety yet so many details for example we saw the diffuser earlier how far underneath the back of the car it goes how many of these parts are to do with airflow and air management around the car. The exposure of the top of the engine you can see at the back, the 1500 to represent the horsepower and the W16, just to remind us that this car has 16 cylinders tucked away back there but also these shapes. For example, this dividing line changes airflow in terms of going to different radiators. You can see the sheer scale of the cooling required for the radiators that are actually sitting back there inside. Then you open the door and you see this interior, the color of it in this car in particular, but with lovely touches like the Chiron embroidery there on the central tunnel, the small stowage area that you have underneath those center controls, but also just the finish of everything. Everything that you look at and can touch is all the very highest of quality mixing those luxury elements along with the sporty capabilities and the performance numbers that nothing else can do to match the likes of a Bugatti, in particular the Chiron. So the Devo we'll hopefully have a better look at in not too distant future. But look at that, look at those headlights, the four on each side, the way they're illuminated. It's a masterpiece this car and a lovely, lovely place to come today to see with my own eyes the Chateau Saint-Jean, the home of Bugatti. So what a legacy Ettore has built. I'm sure they have a lot more to come in the future, but thank you very much for joining me today on this visit. A big thanks to Bugatti for the opportunity to do so. But that's it for this time, guys. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.